you know, I hope you guys are enjoying your uh, Labor Day weekend. Uh, it uh, kind of got kicked off with a little excitement yesterday at the uh, Trojans playing Fresno State Bulldogs. And I'll get into that later. We won. <laughs> um, anyways, okay. So uh, that was a long night. Oh, my God. Um, in fact, you know what? Before I get any further along, um, I think we're going to have to have an official review. Okay. So um, this official review could take about 10 minutes, so it's going to make it this video much longer. Okay. All right. I'm just joking, of course. Anybody who was at the game knows that the first quarter took about an hour and a half because of all the official reviews. Okay. So here we are. Okay. Um, some of you are new to the class. Okay. So I'm going to point out what you need to do. To catch up and the rest of us let's just get into this all right so um, this is your courses these are my courses so you click on JR 200 like so all right and we're in okay um, the course has continued to grow and so we have more staff uh, that is helping us out and that's what all these people are doing they're um, they're all experienced gerontologists all um, experienced with the curriculum and our, and our, and our uh, wonderful people that I've worked with that will help in terms of grading and that's a, a, a big goal of this class is to keep you guys on track to grade things in a timely fashion so you know exactly where you stand okay all right speaking of which okay um so um this is the layout of the course for people that are new okay these are the weekly assignments that you're going to go into you're going to do a quiz you're going to do a discussion do a quiz do a discussion keep your eye on these due dates for these papers okay now, um, if you're new to the class, you click right here, and there's all the how-tos, including how to navigate this course and to get an A in gerontology, okay? So you click on this how-to filter right here, all right? And here it is, how to get an A of Joe 200. So we kind of list everything here um, in uh, uh, verbiage that is just written up, and then we also have a video here. Um, the video is about a half hour long, but I really go through everything you need to know about how to do well, okay? Um, we um, educate you about Turnitin, and now you have to have a Turnitin receipt. You'll see that in the video, okay? Um, make sure you make folders for all your classes with your Turnitin receipts because as um, my co-instructor and partner in life, Julia, who's an amazing attorney, will tell you, you know what? It's best to have all of your evidence in support of your argument so that there's, you know, no argument. <laughs> all right. Um, this, with respect to Turnitin, it teaches you how to avoid plagiarism. We tell you how to post in discussion boards right here, okay? Um, this right here is telling you what to do if you are one of those people that just added to class. So you contact Julia immediately. You can get her email address from the syllabus, okay? Um, here's some Blackboard help right here. Um, and this explains to you what you need to do to go back in and do look at things that have been graded. So you click right there on the number in my grades. All right, so that is a quick overview. Okay, so what we need to do is we're going to jump into this week's assignment. This week's assignment uh, really begins to tap into the information that is going to be super useful for you when you do your first small about three page paper um, a little bit extra with the um, with the figures that you're going to generate so you guys are going to learn how to do data analysis by going in and looking at the world data bank okay alrighty and I'm going to have a separate video for that um, that will be coming in um, to explain everything on September 23rd but this will give you relevance in terms of what you're learning in class all right so we're going to go into the weekly assignments okay if you're new to the class this is what you do you click right here okay all right, I'm in instructor view right now, so your view looks a little bit different than mine. I'll just let you know that, okay? Okay, um, this was last week's assignment right here, okay? So in, in last week's assignment, um, if you remember, we went through the forward through trend five, okay? This was a, um, a lecture where I did kind of a, a, a read along with you, give you an overview of what is going on in the class. Um, there is a quiz that you need to take, okay? Um, you get that done by tomorrow, okay? And um, then this right here was a discussion. And in this particular discussion, it was just an opportunity to introduce yourself to the rest of the class and find out what, uh, what other people are up to, okay? So um, to get full credit on discussion, you do one primary post that has substance, and then you do three posts 
that are um, on your classmates posts okay so you're doing a reply to do that okay all right and uh, again go into how, how to get an A in gerontology video to find out how to do that we're going to the how to section that will describe to you how, to, how you post on discussion boards okay all right so um, you can go click here to go back um, you can click here to go back. Um, it's, you know, it, that's the way Blackboard works. I'll click up here. So I'm going to go into weekly assignments again. Oh, all right. So we are actually in week two. All right. So that is uh, Labor Day, September 2nd. As you can see, this video is not present. I'm going to be posting it right in here. Okay. Um, this will be the readings quiz. And, um, and this is uh, where we start asking you to kind of critically think about um, the uh, different content that is found in, in this course. So we're going to build, okay, a house, okay? We're going to start with little bits and pieces, and we're going to show, um, show you how important this is, and you're going to build your knowledge so that you become an expert in this. And we're going to start by just looking at the, um, the raw numbers, you know, the brute force numbers of aging, okay? And that's what uh, this discussion is about right here. And it's also what it's going to be about in the reading section. So um, and what you do is you just click on this baby right here. Okay, you open it with Adobe um, uh, Acrobat Reader. Okay, and, and it's going to come up here in a sec. Okay, all right. So we go over here. All right. And there it is. Okay, boom. Okay, so um, if we go back to the class, which is right here. What did I want you to do? Trend 5 through EndNote. Got it. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my Adobe Acrobat right here. And I'm going to go from Trend 5. Okay, so we're going to link it up here. Trend 5 right here. That's, I kind of did, I did, I dove into this a little bit last time. Okay, and we're going to go to EndNote right there. Okay, all right, so let's go scroll down to Trend 5. All the way through here. Okay. Oh, some, we're getting there, getting there. It's kind of dizzying, especially after that late night last night. Okay, the band was awesome. I have a bias towards the band, and I'll explain that to you later on. Okay, so aging and population decline. So this is a big deal. It's a big deal for a number of reasons, okay? Um, we have a growing aging population, um, and yet we have fewer people to support their needs, okay? And this, this is um, a gigantic economic problem that is happening in our country and happening worldwide. So I'm going to go over these different issues um, throughout the class. I know a lot of you guys are business major and e majors and econ majors. So this stuff is really, if you, if you just think about it, it's right up your wheelhouse, man. It's, it, is the, it is the world reality, and, it's gonna, and it's, I don't care what career you go into, this is going to be really, really important for you. Okay, so when we look at demographics, <clears throat> that's just looking at um, the, the, the real numbers and the distributions of the different age groups, okay? So we see um, a simultaneous trend, okay, where we're seeing population aging, okay? So what does that mean, okay? Uh, that means because of what we learned last time, okay, um, uh, modern medical technology, okay, has allowed us to um, live much, much longer. Uh, we, um, if you're lucky, you, know, you live a much fuller life, okay, uh, into your older years. But even if you're not lucky <laughs> and you have a lot of health problems, uh, medicine's going to keep you alive. And so we, we, we're, we see this sliding increase in the average lifespan, okay. So, you know, when I was born, okay, so they have an expected lifespan based on the year you were born. And, um, and that's just looking at everybody that was born that year and how many people are going to live to 80 and how many people are going to live to 40, and we're going to find the average, okay? So the average lifespan was you know, much younger uh, when, I, when I was born in 1956. So, you know, it was you know, in, the, in the early 60s, um, you know, 61, 62, left expected lifespan. And now... Boom, we're all the way up to 78, 79 in our country, okay? All right, so for you, for people that are being born this year. All right, so um, so let's look at, you know, what that all means, okay? So um, people live longer, 
Um, and, uh, and the other thing that's happening now is it's so difficult financially to survive in this world as people are getting their careers in order. Um, the, the, the trend to having families, you know, large families, that was a trend of really my parents' generation. Um, you just, you know, basically you had children, the children helped your family industry, you know, whatever that was, you know, you, maybe you had, um, you know, uh, a mom and pop store, maybe you had a farm, okay, maybe you had a small business that was growing, but basically the entire family worked, and so the more hands on deck, the better off you would be, okay, and that all changed, you went to college, um, you had to uh, you know, get trained and trained and trained and trained like I did, like my wife Julia did, and so, you know, I, um, we had our first child when Julia was 32 and a half, and I'm seven years older, so I was almost 40. So I was in my, you know, my first child. I was um, 39 and a half years age of age. You know? My second child, um, uh, I was, you know, approaching 45. So, so yeah, it's a, it's a far different trend. And you guys are delaying it even further because you know you, you know, you you, you want to do well. Okay. So what does that all mean? Okay. That means um, a little more selfish input into your careers, things like that, and we're seeing these population declines. Boom, boom, boom. This is being seen globally. The more um, uh, um, uh, it's a combination of, of the countries being more advanced and also people living longer. And then also, in the case of certain countries like Russia, Ukraine, things like that, people are getting, getting the heck out of Dodge. Okay, So they're emigrating, leaving this country because it's so difficult to survive. Okay, so we can hone in on Russia, and we did this last time, and you can see the distributions right here. So this is all the net losses in these age groups and the net gains in these age groups. So, you know, the balance is just totally shifting. And um, who's going to support these people? You know, um, uh, if it's, if it's uh, family members, the family members aren't there. You know, you, you, we've had a decline in population, decline in births, people have left. So these people are kind of on their own. Um, then it's up to the government or the individual to have saved enough money, you know. And, you know, Russia is not a forgiving place in that way. Okay. So anyways, that's what that's all about. So then we come into, you know, looking at something that is personal, and that's family structure. Uh, the United States is, um, in, in a lot of um, uh, developed countries, uh, there's this tendency to... Um, to launch out on your own, okay? You know, I, I graduated from high school. I was 18 years of age. Uh, I went down to um, a University of California, Irvine, as an undergraduate, and I never looked back. I never returned home, okay? Um, and so, so uh, I, you know, helped my, my mom out from a distance, and also I would go visit because we lived in Southern California, but I was on my own, you know, and it's far different. Uh, there's many, many cultures where you have multiple generations living in the same household. Either way, when you have fewer children, people living longer, it creates a problem. Okay, and that's what this is all about. All right. So most people today, okay, um, older people, you know, they have children, grandchildren, siblings, okay. Um, but when you have low birth rates, um, Future generations have issues, okay? Um, no siblings to help out in terms of the caregiving, both the um, social, emotional, and the financial cost of caring for your parents and grandparents, okay? Um, and so that's uh, what this uh, whole article is going through. So they, they, they talk about, you know, again, you guys have to, you know, we're, we're world leaders, so um, economically, um, predictions that can be made, and we look at what are called um, uh, aging pyramids, okay? It's just a way to chart out the populations. They talk about a being called family. So what I did, okay, is I went ahead and I did some searches right here, okay? So it says bean pole and aging pyramid, okay? And so what we can do is look at this, this article right here. So if you click on it, it will take you to um, this article right here, okay? So, um, and you don't even have to read a word of the article, okay? Because I, this is the way my brain works anyways. I'm, I'm just figure-based. I love imagery, okay? So this looks like a pyramid, classic pyramid of a developing country where you have lots and lots and lots of young people, okay? 
people don't survive so well, okay? Because it's really tough living in Pakistan in 2009, okay? And then this is a developed country, okay? And you can see that it's getting more vertical in its orientation. You have this glut right here, this is 2009, of this age group, but people aren't having children, and people, old, older people are living longer, so they're starting to build up in the population, okay? So this is, if we look at, this is populations and millions in this scale, and we're looking at the age groups right here. So it's a real quick and dirty way to get figure out what's going on. Um, um, and this is what happens when we do the U.S. Census, okay? You can get all this data, and you can figure all this stuff out, and then you start making kind of economic uh, decisions uh, in terms of the country, in terms of uh, globally. And then we look right here, we can see even gender differences, okay? You see that women tend to live longer, okay, out here than men, okay? So you have a, kind of a gender um, imbalance in the distribution. All right. Um, so we can just look at a couple examples and predictions, okay? So uh, Brazil um, is, you know, rapidly aging as well. It's a um, was a, a developing country, okay? It's getting up there right here. We can see in 2000, this is, you know, the classic kind of pyramid shape. A lot of young people right here, not as many aged people, but you see that it's starting to get fat through here, okay? All right, we're still getting a lot more older people hanging in there. So the distribution, okay, is um, is changing in terms of a um, you know, the workforce right here, okay? All right and um, the number of young people and old people. See, young people and old people are dependent on these people, you know? You guys are still dependent on your parents to finance your development, okay? And then older people become dependent on their kids to maybe finance them, at the very least to help them sort out a lot of the issues they're having, okay? Now you can see there's a lot of people here. They haven't lost populations, okay? But it's just the distribution is changing and that's gonna have economic issues for them. All right, uh, we can look down here um, and, you know, again, looking at uh, different countries and different predictions, okay? You can see Germany is getting really lopsided, okay? A lot of older people, fewer young people. How do we finance, for example, social care services? Like, you know, Germany's um, Social Security and Medicare programs. You know, this is a really, really, really expensive time in people's lives. They're not working. They're not part of the gross domestic product. We can learn all about that. Okay? So they're really not contributing. Okay? But they need a lot of services. Okay? And fewer people. So, you know, one way to, if the, if the individuals aren't there to help, the government's going to try and help. If the government's going to try and help, then we're going to have to tax your paycheck more. Okay? United States, what do we see here? Okay? Uh, the year 2000, okay? And um, uh, this right here, again, um, um, is my age group right here, okay? Um uh, and then there's my children right there, so you can see this. And then, you know, what's happened here is we're getting just kind of a, a beam pole flattening here. We're getting more older people. A lot of the increase we see here is immigration. Now, these are predictions done in 2009, and immigration changes. So um, we needed uh, actually a new analysis right there. Okay. All righty. So this is the ultimate case study. And this is Japan. So we're going to spend a lot of time on Japan right here. You can see right here, again, populations in millions, okay? You can see that Japan is shrinking. Their workforce is shrinking. And how can they continue to be an economic power when this is happening, okay? So this, this is a real dilemma for Japan, okay? Um, again, 1950, you know, classic pyramid, all righty? So this is post-World War II, okay? Um, and then uh, Japan, uh, um, to get things going, people, you know, financially, they didn't have children. So it was like, you know, the canary in the coal mine kind of thing. Um, we can see year 2000, how, how, how vertical this distribution is, okay? So this is, again, baby boom era, their children right here, okay? But by 2015, 2050, um, people are living much longer. There's hardly any reproduction, okay? And as a result, it's incredibly lopsided, okay? And this is catastrophic in terms of who's gonna, within this age group, 
Again, don't forget, this is a working public. They still have to support them, and they have to support them, okay? So a huge burden. It's called the sandwich generation. Huge burden on these people to finance this, okay? Hopefully these people have um, some type of uh, defined contribution, okay? We'll talk about that later. Or a pension system, but the pension system is, is government mostly, and then that's expensive. Somebody's got to pay for that. Somebody's got to be taxed, okay? All right, so you can just kind of go through this and look at everything. Remember earlier we were looking at Russia? You can see, you know, the changes in the population, you know, how it's just shrinking in terms of youth and a bigger distribution here. You can see China. So you can make big, giant, global predictions about society, how it's going to operate, and also about the economics. I just want you, wanted to show that to you. Cool. So again, how did I get there? Okay. So I got there by just doing beam pull and aging pyramid and, and, and started clicking around on this. Okay. All right. Probably a little too verbose on that, but I, I think it's important for us to, to consider this. Okay. All right. So we're going back here to the original article. Okay. Sorry. I'm going to go back over here. Um, it's this part right here, trend five through end notes. So we're going to go back to this article right here and we're going to kind of continue to dive in and look at this. Now, our country, okay, and a lot of developed countries, you know, um, you know, things change, okay. So it's talking about here, you know, how how um, people don't die as much, the mortality rate, okay, is being reduced, okay. People are are, are um, you have surviving parents, aunts and uncles, okay, um, and there's a good chance that you can know these grand your your, your older family members, okay. Um, but again, the issue is uh, with changing dynamics, things like modern families with divorce and things like that, migration, who is going to care for all these old, old people? A big issue is childlessness, okay? Um, so if you don't have a family structure to watch out for me, I have two boys, you know, hopefully they'll be able to help uh, Julie and I when we um, start going, <laughs> circling the train, because that's what happens, you know? Um, you know, I, I, I hope it'll work out. You know, there's a lot of people that don't have anything. And so they're dependent on society, you guys, okay, um, to figure this out, okay. And a lot of, lot, a lot of countries are dealing with this. So again, there's huge opportunity for you if you, if you go into this, okay. All right. So this again goes into the distribution. So we can look at this figure and again, we can, uh, you know, look at Japan, you know, as, Again, this canary in the coal mine. This is only through 2000 right here. But you can see how quickly things started to change in terms of um, people. We're looking at living arrangements of people of age 65 and over in Japan. Okay? And we see that we have, they're in an institution. Okay? And there's a, you know, one of the fastest growing problems you know, is that people are being forced to live in an institution. They're living alone. Okay? Um, they're living with their spouse only, and this dynamic of multiple generations is just just declining. Okay, all right, and that's what that's all about right there. All right, so we can then ask ourselves um, economically. Okay, um, if we're living longer and there's not a younger generation that's going to support us, okay, then it's up to us to finance our own well-being. So we're going to have this shifting pattern in work. And, and, and when to retire, okay? And um, so this is a big deal, okay? Big deal, okay, in terms of each country's economy, okay? Um, a, again, you want people to be um, producers, not just consumers, okay? Um, and so um, it, it really, really drives the economy of a country as long as you're, you know, continue to be productive. And... Um, so policymakers are struggling with maintaining this balance, and there's a the big issue is um, uh, income security, right? We're going to ask you to, to look at Social Security. Is it adequate? Of course not. Of course not. You know, and what do we do? What do we do? You know, people need to start saving on their own. Okay, you can't depend on government. Other countries, you know, uh, the you know Denmark and Sweden. Their approach is to have a really high levels of taxation, and then the government steps in and creates um, support for older people. You know, 
we're not there. So uh, it's uh, all these different models. Okay, so so we're looking at again uh, a number of issues. Okay, um, so uh, a big economic concern. Okay, if you're if you're a company, is finding people to work in your company that are skilled. Okay, because um, we have this problem of a sh shrinking workforce. Okay, that is you know in comparison to the number of people that are consumers, okay? So, um, uh, back in the day, a lot of companies used to have pensions, okay? And, uh, you know, it's become such a burden that it's now you know, no more pension. Pension is, uh, just to give you a, a leg up, we'll talk about it more, pension is a guaranteed monthly income until the day you die, period, you know? Uh, doesn't You didn't have to invest anything, the, the company gives you a pension and they guarantee it, you know? Until the company starts having economic problems, then you have a problem. Um, the biggest source of pension is any job in the U.S. government, okay? From a firefighter, from a city worker, a state worker, federal worker, Congress, all these people have guaranteed pensions that will carry them all the way till the day they die. What do we know? People keep living longer and longer and longer, so the government that is guaranteed this pension is going to have to pay it out longer and longer and longer. All right. But where's the money going to come from? Okay. Whoa. Sorry. That's Julie. <laughs> the money's coming from your tax dollar. It is what it is. Okay. Or a redistribution. All right. So, um, you, you, um, uh, my mom used to say, uh, you, you take from Peter and you give to Paul. It's an old, uh, religious statement. Okay. Um, but it is what it is. So you just take from one source and um, and you give it to another. Okay. So the, for example, the other uh, it was I think it was last week, uh, the Federal Emergency Management Administration (FEMA) that's responsible for helping people that suffer from uh, consequences of earthquakes and hurricanes and, and tornadoes, all that, that kind of stuff. Um, he decided to cut their budget and then take that money and put it into other resources for um, you know, helping in terms of immigration control and building the wall and things like that. So, so uh, yeah, so, so um, it's got to come from somewhere. So either tax or redistribution distribution of incomes. It's a big deal, okay? We look at our federal deficit, okay? Um, and it grows and grows and grows because we have to keep paying out, all right? Okay, so that's a you know again policymakers politics you know this is a big big deal for you guys okay, all right so these are just you know in this study so this OECD is describing the paper we're reading right now, and it talks about things that they look at you know um, how many years before you enter the workforce you know you guys are spending a lot more more time in school so you're now you're still a drain <laughs> all right um, you're a dependent on your parents okay. Um, you know, when we have economic cycles, you know, again, not being productive, okay? And then we have years in workforce and years in retirement. So you see, we have these three different variables right here that are, are, are sucking the life out of this, okay? In terms of somebody has to fund something, okay? All right, so, so as a consequence, okay, of the changing economic climate, climate what do we see here? Um, this is, uh, again, in Europe, okay, ages 55 to 64, uh, looking at, again, this is through, you know, a, a study of populations, okay, so it's a census, and we see a continued growth, 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 growth of people um, in that older age group staying in the workforce longer, okay? There are disincentives in a lot of these countries, so they have they have these crazy pensions, and now uh, it's they're choking on the pensions, okay? All righty, and this is what I'm looking at right here. So um, we're looking at pu public pensions, okay? So again, if you work for this for city of Laguna Niguel where I live, or you work for the state of California, and you retire at age um, 55, okay, all right, or a police officer, you know, something like that, um, then you get a pension, okay? Um, you know, if you are making 150 grand a year, you're going to make 150 grand a year for the rest of your life, okay? You retire at 55, you're going to live to 90, okay? Whoa, all right? So um, that's 35 years of, of a lot of payout that somebody's going to have to pay for, okay? All righty. 
So we see that these countries were a little too generous in their pensions system, okay? And so people are just bailing on work. Why should I keep working? Um, I'm burned out. I got this guaranteed income stream. Okay, all right. You see um, uh, other countries have had to reduce the pension system, okay? All righty. So uh, again, that's, that's a big deal, okay? All right, so um, another... Um, uh, um, financial um, instability, okay, has to do with what's called the social insurance systems, all right? What is that? That is um, our social security system, okay, which pays us income to live on, and Medicare. And you're going to see that Medicare is the one that is absolutely just killing our country. It's so expensive for medical care, all right? And what did we see in the last time we talked? We talked about the rise in non-communicable diseases, okay? Things like Alzheimer's, heart disease, cancer, and um, it's just a crash, you know, we're, we're headed on a crash course right now, okay? So we can look at um, 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 expansions, okay? Uh, expenses, sorry, okay? Um, uh, as, a, as a percentage of the gross domestic product. And this is the, the country's financial well-being. Okay, gross domestic product is looking at how many goods you're producing, how many services you're producing and, and gaining income from, okay? So I might produce the service that people in Germany are going to pay me for, okay? So that's just bringing money into my country, and it's, a, it's, a, it's the more things we sell, the more services we can sell, the more vibrant our economy is, Okay. A detraction of that is expenditures, okay? And we can see, remember what we were talking about, um, pension expenditures. Look at these top countries again. So a huge percentage of their well-being is being uh, uh, thrown at, um, you know, caring for the older people, okay? Um, so this is, you know, it's a, it's a big, big deal. Um, and so you start having to rethink things. And this is, a, you know, if you're a politician, you're an economist, that's the deal, okay? We have to, um, we have to reconsider how much Social Security we're going to be. So what we've been doing in our country is we start sliding with the eligibility for the Social Security, all right? Yeah, you can retire at age 62 and a half. That's the first time you can retire. But we're going to cut your Social Security by 30%. Boom, okay. Um, you can retire 66.7 years right now, and you can get um, the maximum Social Security, which is not that much money, believe me, guys, okay. Um, or, you know, here's an incentive program that our country put in place. How about if you retire at 72, and we'll take that amount that you're going to get at 67, and we'll increase it by 30%, so you get 130%. All right, so if I can keep working, all right, then I will, and my Social Security will increase because I, I got longevity in my family. So I'm going to be one of those really old professors that you see walking around campus, okay, uh, because this is important to me, okay. The other thing that's important to me is um, health insurance, okay. So my wife, Julia, you're going to learn all about her. She has cancer, okay. She's seven years younger than me. Um, I don't want to go into our Medicare because I want to choose the best doctors possible, which means, okay, that I have to work to 72 to maintain our health insurance so that she um, uh, will have health insurance, okay? Um, she doesn't even qualify for Medicare, so that was a misstatement, okay? Um, um, she qualifies for Medicare, okay, um, in seven years. You know, even though I can retire here soon, I can't because of that financial financial problem and we're going to get into that later okay so we're looking at this again here's another you know example of what we are facing so china you know boom it just exploded okay so we're looking at the ratio of um, pensioners versus covered workers okay so we're looking at right here these are millions and millions of people that are dependent on the government to fund their well-being financially. They no longer work. They still need money. Okay? Alrighty. So, we see this is just going, and what do we see here? Okay? Less and less children. Okay? The one-child policy, things like that. Suddenly, 
you have more, more and more people saying, I need Medicare, their version of Medicare. I need Social Security. And less and less and less and less and less and people available to pay into the system. Because the system is it's not this big, giant bank that is like, oh, we're just going to live off compound interest. No, 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 no. More and more money is coming out of your individual pocket to pay their well-being. That's how we will operate too. And it's, again, it's a crash course. All right. So, um, so that's one big economic challenge. Another big economic challenge is labor supply. Okay. Um, labor supply in a lot of ways. Okay. As people have less children. Okay. Like I said, you're forming a company. You want the best employees you can find. And guess what's happening, man? There's just, there's not enough good people. Okay. This is why we need immigration for getting your businesses to operate in maximum efficiency, okay? And we can, again, look at um, this, okay? Um, we can look at financial markets and population aging and the economic pressures, all this stuff. I just want you to read through this, okay? Um, and what we see here, okay, is, um, again, uh, when we talk about your own well-being, okay? I'm tired from that game last night. I don't know, but I get, you know what time I got home? Two o'clock in the morning because my son's in the band there. I let the cat out of the bag. And so they they played all night long, okay? And um, and he wanted to come home for Labor Day weekend, so they even came home with us. So we got home about two o'clock in the morning. So I'm tired. But anyways, it's all good. Okay, so... Um, I talked about um, defined benefits, okay, pensions, all right, that are only from governments, and then we have Social Security. What else do you guys have available to you? All right, individual stocks, okay, right there, or large clusters of individual stocks called mutual funds. All right, this is you as an individual investing in your own future, okay? So I think we just keep that there. Awesome, okay? So, um, Remember those countries that were just being choked by their pension system? Why should I care? Okay. If you're going to pay my way. All right. Except for now they got some major problems. Okay. Um, we see a lot of other countries. Again, this is in Europe. And we're right up here in the United States where you have your own pension. I mean, your own defined contribution. Sorry. Your defined contribution. Where where you define how much you're going to contribute to your own retirement. So every month I take a portion of my paycheck and I throw it into um, uh, an account where I manage it and Julie manages it. Actually, I'm lying. Julie manages all of it because she's super brilliant in this area. So we have our own Fidelity account and we move it around. We're, we're our own money manager and you guys can be that as well. Um, a financial advisor, money managers. In today's world, you know, you can do this on your own. If you if you have a phone and you like to, you know, play with your phone, okay, boom, 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 then you can play with your phone in your own Fidelity or Vanguard account. So we have lots and lots of money in our mutual funds right here, and we assign risk and we do whatever we want. That way, if the government goes broke, I have my money invested elsewhere, okay? That goes south, well, then I'll just teach till I'm 100. Okay. All right. So this is what this is all about. Okay. Now, with fertility decline, okay, um, with um, a lot more older people, okay, one thing we have to think about is, um, is again, uh, your con the, the period that you contribute, okay? So this is, you know, consumption, okay, right here. Okay, and you, you can still are a train, you know, in terms of consuming, okay, as you get older, okay, not so much when you're younger, okay. Um, this is me producing income, and suddenly my draw of income goes down. This is an average work at a developing country in Thai, okay, like Thailand, okay. But you can see this, this spectrum of problem. You're a drain out here now compared to here where you were actually contributing. Okay. All right. Now, something I, I do want to talk about. So that's that's the um, the article. Do look at the end notes and read through it. It gives you a little more of a feel what the study's all about. I'm going to get out of here. Okay. Um, 
we're going to um, ask you to do the quiz. You do the you do right here the um, the uh, discussion, and again he starts thinking about what well, what are the now now from this lecture and from your readings what are the consequences of this? Well, all these old people, all these you know, mostly younger people, you're sandwiched in the middle. Okay, you, you know you wanted to have kids, you can't because you're caring for the older people. Um, it's a lot of expense. It's a lot of time. It's, it makes life very difficult, okay? Um, this is looking at the speed with which this is happening. You know, France and Sweden had a long, long time to figure things out, okay? This is where you're, you're doubling the percentage of people that were age 65 and over. We had a pretty long time to figure it out. Some of these younger countries, um, you know, these are developing countries right here. These are, are developed, but breakneck speed, woo, Okay, older people and their, their infrastructure is not ready. So this is an opportunity you guys get to specialize and you become really, really educated in this. You can get a job globally to help these countries out. Um, again, you look at the millions and millions of people, you know, um, you know, this is, you know, approaching the size of our entire country. Here's India and um, in, in China, um, looking at people age 65 and older, and you see this, this is an enormous, enormous problem for them. Okay. Um, again, this is our case study, looking at Japan, and we saw that earlier. So you watch these videos and you look at uh, what it consequence, okay? Um, this is a great video right here, and this, again, uh, about the age bomb. And then, um, as we are talking, as I was talking about earlier, it's creating... Um, social woes of, of caring for the older people and then economic problems, major economic problems because the workers aren't there, the, the, the people that are younger have to care for more and more older people. Okay, um, I'm going to throw these two articles um, as well. Uh, in, this is talking about our situation right here. So we, we look, I'm going to go back to that article. So this is Washington Post article that came out last month. And it talks about um, Maine being a, an amazing example of elder boom and then worker shortage. And uh, it's a preview of our nature, nation future. So we'll, when we get into caregiving, I'm going to bring this up. So this guy can't find any workers to help him out in his business of fishing. And so he's, and he's getting older. He's in his 60s. He's got some problems. Um, this talks about of uh, so many older people and the different type of agencies that um, that are there for elder care that uh, support the old people, they can't find the workers to do the work. And as a result, old people are floundering. They can't find anybody to help them out. Um, these are very, very dependent older people, something that I hopefully won't become, but it is, it's reality, it is what it is. So it, again, it goes through all all the problems that people that they're experiencing in Maine and other uh, other countries, other states in our country. So, so I'm going to put this into our caregiving section, but I want to give you a heads up because it's totally related to caregiving. And then this talks about here about these states. Um, it's the uh, fastest growing job in America right now uh, because of this age uh, aging boom. But it's a thankless job. It's very difficult, and it's a really low paying job. And something's got to change in this way. We've got to figure out ways to maybe create government re resources that will pay for this, okay? Um, uh, it could be just you being taxed more to help with elder care. Or, again, just give me a financial incentive um, so I can put away money more easily on my own from what I'm doing when I'm working to pay for my elder care down the line. All right, so these are big, big issues. And it, and it goes through her experience as being, you know, how taxing it is being uh, somebody that, again, is caring for somebody who's, who's much, much older and very dependent. Okay. All righty, guys. So, um, so that is uh, my long-winded lecture, okay? Um, what I, I wanted to show you. Okay, that's right. I wanted to show you this, okay? That's me surfing, yeah, my Facebook page, okay? But not that. I just wanted to remind you, okay, about just how awesome yesterday was, okay? So if we click on this, we'll see if it'll come up. Here we go. All right. That was the beginning of the game, okay? A bit out of focus Facebook. Um, 
post of the video. All right, so let's find another one. Let's find a better one, better one, better one, better one, better one. Oh, yeah, baby. Okay, so remember the end of the game last night? Remember Fresno State, whose team left, all their fans left, and yet their band kept blasting away when we're trying to celebrate? Never forget, my friends. Okay, so um, here we are right here. Here's my son, David, on the milk one. Nice one. So good stuff. The milk ones are awesome. They're, they're like a big, giant horn. You hear them every song. I hope this of you guys in the band. Oh. There he goes. Days of Preston. I love the USC band's attitude. Best part of the band. Alright. I thought you might enjoy that. So, where else do we have a little picture of Dave? So, there he is. Alright, so that's. That was that. There's Dave right there. It was my good friend Vanessa Vivi. Alright. Um, what else do we have? More Dave. And that was, if you didn't get a chance to do it, see, this, this was right in from Heritage Hall, which was awesome. Dr. Partner, he is the bomb. All right, the new drum major, okay. And there they are coming out of the tunnel. It was, it was an awesome experience for us. There was a band last night. And, uh, it was really cool. Dr. Partner again. Um, and that was all of us celebrating afterwards, which was awesome. Um, yeah, so... Yeah, we had a good time. I hope you guys had a good time as well. Okay, guys, so um, let's get back here to the reality. So next week, we will be going. Uh, again, you just click right here to the weekly assignments. All right. And it's getting me there sooner or later. Boom. Okay, so next week, we'll be going into analysis of U.S. trends. And awesome, guys. Bye.